Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Myself Dr. Venkatesh, working as research fellow at Department of OBG, Massachusetts General Hospital, Harvard Medical School. In the previous video, we have discussed about introduction to pharmacology, where we talk about pharmacodynamics and kinetics. Today, I am going to explain drug actions and its general principles. The emergency of pharmacology as a science came when the emphasis shifted from describing what drugs to do, explaining how they work. To begin with, we should gratefully acknowledge Paul Ehrlich. He is a German scientist who discovered the Salvar son in 1909 for the treatment of syphilis. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted disease which shows rashes kind of symptoms on genitals, mouth and skin. He termed the first magic bullet. Eventually it led to the foundation of the concept of chemotherapy. The magic bullet means it is a drug target. Suppose it's any kind of drug. It might be the antimicrobial drugs like uh, penicillins. Generally, penicillin G will be a drug of choice for the syphilis. Now I will explain. Suppose any penicillins uh, penicillin G if it is, if shows the pharmacological activity means it should be bind with its drug target or magic bullet then only it will show is its pharmacological activity means for showing any kind of activity drug should bind with the drug target The drug targets are mainly important for developing effective and safe medications. It will help to minimize the adverse effects. Most of the drug targets are proteins and also sometimes it is a lipids also. Like low, low density lipid proteins. And also sometimes it might be the DNA also. Now I'll explain. The drug targets majorly they are proteins, DNA, RNA and receptors. Mostly receptors are the proteins. So they will go and bind with the receptors like receptors or proteins or DNA, RNA then they will show the they will show its pharmacological activity the excretions among the new generations of pharmaco like uh, biopharmaceutical drugs that include the nucleic acids like mrna based therapeutics or mirna based therapeutics or proteins antibodies they develop to treat the different kind of diseases as I mentioned earlier if the drug want to show its activity it should go and bind with the, its specific receptor or protein then it will be activated then only it shows its activity coming to protein targets there are these protein targets are majorly classified into receptors, enzymes, carrier molecules and ion channels. In the coming video, we can discuss more about this classification. Today I am going to give one explanation or one example for explaining how the receptors involved in the physiological systems how they will play the role. Suppose 
Epinephrine, also called as adrenaline, it shows its pharmacological activity by binding with the beta adrenergic receptors here. It activates the adenylate cyclase. Eventually, it turns the ATP into cyclic AMP. This cyclic AMP further converts the protein kinase <coughs> will be activated. Then it increases the contraction of like cardiocytes or cardiac cells. Like it stimulates the heart functions, means it increases the blood pressure. Like that, the receptors are involved for showing any kind of physiological activity. Now we can more we can talk about what is agonist and what is antagonist. So coming to agonist. If drug show its activity means it should go and bind with a, its respective receptor. This receptor will show activity after binding this agonist in their specific location. Suppose some kind of drugs may act like a antagonist. Antagonist means they can go and bind with the same location and it will block the receptor function and it doesn't show any effect means it go and binds but it doesn't show any activity means and also it will prevent the binding of any agonist and blocks the its physiological activity that's called antagonist now these antagonists again we can classify it into different types first we can talk about what is fully agonist fully agonist means it's a substance that binds to and activates a receptor to its maximum efficacy it means it produces a fully biological response it means that the full agonist binds to a receptor it induces the maximum possible response coming to sorry <clears throat> coming to partial antagonist partial means it produces the partial response instead of maximum response even when occupying the same receptor suppose this is a x receptor and drug will go and bind this is a drug it shows the full effect or maximum effect then it's called full agonist if it go and binds in the same location and shows partial effect or medium effect then it's called partial agonist coming to antagonist again i'm explaining here antagonist is a substance that binds to a receptor inhibits the or blocks its normal physiological function means it will go and bind here and stop the biological activity or function unlike the agonist which activate the receptors to produce the biological response antagonists do not activate the receptor but instead they prevent other molecules it might be the endogenous ligands from binding to the receptor and triggering the recept uh, receptor response or biological response that's called agonist sorry antagonist let's talk more about antagonist so these antagonists are further classified into different types first is competitive antagonist what is it competitive antagonist these antagonists compete with the agonist for binding to the same receptor suppose this guy is a drug a it competes with the drug a and fights with that and go and bind to the same receptor and 
it interferes with this binding of drug A. So it can be overcome by increasing the concentration of agonist. Suppose non-competitive antagonist. These antagonists bind to a site on the receptor that is different from the agonist binding site. Suppose the agonist will go and bind, uh, bind here, but the antagonist go bind in the different location and changes the uh, conformational change in the receptor and making it less responsive to the agonist. Means it modulates the receptor function, means changes conformationally. Coming to inverse agonist. In some cases, more substances referred to as inverse agonist not only block the receptor but also induce an opposite physiological response compared to agonist. So they go and bind to the same receptor location and it completely blocks and also shows completely opposite to the physiological response exerts by the agonist that can be called as inverse agonist so they stabilize the inactive state of the receptor so coming to some examples we can talk competitive antagonists like atropine atropine so each and we can talk like a competitive ignore I'm, I'm talking like atropine so atropine is a competitive antagonist for acetylcholine at muscarinic receptors it completes sorry it competes with the acetylcholine for binding to muscarinic receptors and blocks their activation this is often used in medicine to contract excessive cholinergic stimulation so this is one of the example for competitive antagonist. Coming to non-competitive antagonist. Like we can talk about uh, fencyclidine. It is a fencyclidine non-competitive example. Like different binding sites. They can go and bind in the different binding sites. Example fencyclidine. So it is a NMDA antagonist. It binds to the site within the ion channel pore of the receptor, blocking the channel and preventing the normal receptor function. Again, coming to the one example for the inverse agonist. So buprenorphine. So buprenorphine. So it is a opiate used for the pain, pain management. So it acts as an agonist at opiate receptors. It also has inverse agonist properties at the same receptor. Inverse agonist can reduce the basal activity of receptors, providing a different pharmacological profile compared to neutral antagonists. So coming to again, what is drug affinity and avidity? Simple affinity means the drug can go and bind with its uh, receptor or something. It's called like simply strength of single reaction. Coming to avidities, avidity is the total strength of multiple interactions. Sometimes the drug can bind with the different receptors at a time. So again, I will explain each and everything. Affinity can be refer as the strength of binding interaction between the single receptor site and a single ligand molecule. Example, the affinity of the drug for its target receptor. It might be any example like drug A can bind with one receptor. And avidity. Avidity is a measure of the overall strength of binding between multiple binding sites on a multivalent molecule. 
and multiple ligand molecules. It takes into account multiple interactions between the ligand and the receptor. We can talk like most of the antibodies and antigen antibody interactions are involved in the ability kind of explorations. So antibody being a multivalent molecule with the multiple binding sites can bind to multiple copies of the antigen simultaneously increase in the overall strength of the interactions like antibody and antigen interactions coming to drug efficacy and potency what is drug efficacy efficacy is the ability of the drug after binding with receptors to initiate the change which leads to certain effects suppose any drug can go and bind with the receptor and shows its effect simply efficacy means like you can if it is exert some response coming to emax efficacy maximum efficacy it is the capacity of the drug to produce the maximum response in other words efficacy is the maximum response that can be elicited by the drug efficacy is the ability of the drug to elicit the physiological response when interact with the receptor this is called simply response coming to one more is the term potency potency majorly we can talk about different doses suppose x drug produces less response if it is in the low concentration if you give the same drug at a high concentrate it shows different kind of response again we can talk potency is the comparative measure of different doses of two drugs that are needed to produce the same physiological effect it is also known as a drug strength here we can talk about two terms one is called ec50 and ed50 both are same first one is effective concentration and effective dose first it means that the drug required to produce 50 percentage of drugs maximal effect like 50 percentage it's like 0 50 100 here 50 percentage again the drug required to produce 50 percentage of its drugs maximum effect suppose it's a more the ed50 of the drug less potency and less the ed50 means more potency suppose more ed50 means more effective concentration means less potency okay if it is less more edf 50 or ec 50 means less potency or less ed 50 mean high potency right so potency is the measure of amount of drug necessary to produce an effect of the given magnitude so that is the difference between the drug efficacy and potency i hope you understand about uh, the basic knowledge about how drug will act and it shows effect by binding to the receptors or proteins or enzymes or any it's like just it's a basic overview if you have any doubts please comment below and i can respond as soon as possible if you like this video if you please uh, comment and share and please subscribe thank you